Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this month's Google Hangout here at Business Training Made Simple. My name is Sarah Kogan. I'm part of the team here at Made Simple Group, and I'm joined by Michelle Carvel today, social media expert, author, blogger, guru, recently mm -hmm. published of the book The Business of Being Social. Um, so today, Michelle will be talking about how to optimize your personal LinkedIn profile. And before we get started, just a few things um, to go through. If you have any questions throughout, please do not hesitate. Um, you can tweet them at us at MIMO Training, or there'll be a little chat option at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Just log in on there and post your questions, and we'll answer them at the end. Um, and I think that's everything. We can see people coming in, so I hope everyone's having a lovely Thursday. And, and we'll get started. So we're just going to transfer it over to the slides now. So for a couple of minutes, you'll just see a funny screen, and then we'll get going. Okay, so Michelle, over to you. Great, thank you, Sarah. So this session is going to be about optimizing your personal LinkedIn profile. We've covered it in the past, um, optimizing a company profile, and we've looked at LinkedIn for lead generation. But today's session is really just focusing on 10 tips about your personal LinkedIn profile. You can see in the top right-hand corner of the slide there, the hashtag MIMO training, and the Twitter at handle MIMO training. As Sarah said, if you've got any questions throughout the, the session, then be sure to post your questions to Sarah, or indeed you can you can use the chat system um, within the uh, within the hangout. So let's get started. Um, some stats on on LinkedIn just to get us started. So um, LinkedIn is actually the the uh, oldest of, of all of the, the the rather modern social networks. So LinkedIn was launched in 2003, so it's had its 11th birthday. It's currently got uh, nearly 300 300 million um, members and we talk about 12 million of those being in the UK. LinkedIn operates the largest professional network on the internet and and unlike Facebook and Twitter you know people don't go to LinkedIn to to play games or to hang out with their friends and family LinkedIn is definitely the place where people go to do business so it's much more the the B2B network out of all of the the social networks that we have so far and um, and it's and it's busy and it's growing all the time professionals are signing up to join LinkedIn at a rate of more than two new members every second so there's always new people to connect with uh, always new people coming on to LinkedIn what we're going to um, cover today is um, we're going to go through 10 tips so this summary uh, is is what we're gonna we're, what we're gonna cover, and we'll look at this slide at the beginning and at the end. So we're gonna look at how you can change your URL. We're gonna look at how you can complete uh, compelling headlines. Uh, we'll look at how you optimize the content throughout your profile. Uh, getting to all star, what that means is is making sure that your profile is as complete as it needs to be complete. Uh, we'll look at why it's important to personalize messaging, and uh, we will talk about not being spammy or, or selling and, and how it's important to be targeted when you're on the network. We'll look at how you can get recommendations and how they can help you boost your visibility on LinkedIn and also a quick look at groups. Okay, so if we move to the first tip, and, and uh, you know, I, I often speak to groups of people. Just last week I was at a, at a networking event uh, or a conference actually of um, law firms and of course as you would expect when I said who here is on LinkedIn everybody had a pretty much had a LinkedIn profile when I asked them if their uh, profile was up to up to date you know and uh, they'd claimed their URL most people were like Ooh, don't, know, don't know what you're talking about and this is a really simple thing that everybody can do so that when you actually have your personal LinkedIn profile you can actually promote it you could put it on web pages you can put it in the email footer of, of your signatures you can you can you can put it on your business card if you so wished so you can see there on the screen that we're looking at Sarah's profile here and in the bottom the bottom um, left hand corner in the first bit here there is a just here where I've got the mouse here you can see LinkedIn dot com forward slash in Sarah Kerrigan. So she has actually 
secured her name. And very often, if she hadn't done that, and what we see a lot with profiles, is that what you'll find is it starts off looking the same, but then it will turn into a whole string of gobbledygook, just less letters and numbers, and that identifies that you haven't secured your URL um, on LinkedIn. And the cleaner that is, the better, because if you do want to use that in the written format, then, then it just looks a whole lot better that it's you know LinkedIn. And it also helps you to be found in search as well, because if that's your LinkedIn URL and it's just your name, um, it could be tax advisor or cat groomer or whatever else you wanted it to be. It doesn't have to be your name, but you can secure it so that it's yours and then you can use it so that people can find your profile and find you. Um, to change that is really simple. Here now in the right hand side of the screen, you will see that when you go into editing your profile, you click that little edit button around here and it will pop up and open this section here saying your public profile URL. And you'll see here that it's showing that's what Sarah's URL is and it says customize your public profile URL, view your prof public profile. So you can just click that and then you can go in and provided the the, the terms that you put in there are available, you can actually secure that to, to yours. Um, down, just underneath there as well, you'll see here this little profile badge, and it's got create a profile badge. And you can click that, and what it does is it takes you to a page where there's lots of different versions of such a badge like that, and you can decide which one you want for yourself. You might be putting it on a uh, as I said, an email signature or on, on, on a web page, you know, connect with us or contact me or see my LinkedIn profile, however however you want to position it. And you can literally just pick up that code that the, the little badge creates, drop it into your web page, and then it will automatically connect. So it's all done for you via LinkedIn. It's, it, you, you simply just have to go there, and if you click on it, it will show you through the steps that you can do. So the first thing that's really important is to claim that URL so that it is your name because if you want to be found on your name for people ser you know searching on your name then it's important that you've secured that so that your profile actually maps to the URL that you're using. The next point here is create a search friendly and personal headline. So the headline just jumping ahead here is that section. It's this section here. And here you get 120 characters to, to put your headline, headline in. So you want to make sure that your headline is quite specific. Very often what we see is people will say product manager or partner or manager. And it's kind of manager of what? Partner of what? Um, you know, if you're the family law partner, then then make sure you're saying family law or expert in dispute resolution or, or whatever it is. If you're a product manager, make sure you're talking about what that product is so that you've got some specifics. So what you want to think about is when you are creating your headline is that if somebody was looking for you and what it is that you do online, what words are they likely to type into Google or indeed LinkedIn to find you? And then you want to endeavor to make sure that you are populating that headline, that really all important headline with keywords that, that, that matter for you. So if we jump ahead and we look at my profile's keywords here, you can see that I'm not necessarily talking about uh, marketing or business transformation uh, or advertising, which are all things I've done in my career, but I'm actually optimizing my headline for the moment. What is it that I want people to find me for right now? And you'll see in there that I've got social media strategy, social media consultant, social media trainer, author, blogger, and experienced online marketeer. So it still kind of makes sense. You know, it's not just keyword, 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 keyword. You know, there is a there is a there is a a theme to it, but it it's 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 actually got all those fundamental keywords in there, those those words that people are going to be searching on. And, and have a look at profiles 
of your friends, your colleagues, or, or just generally on LinkedIn, and you will see that a lot of people miss out on that all important element by just putting in partner, manager, marketing. You know, it doesn't actually tell us what where, where the speciality is, and it's unlikely that people are just going to search that broadly. So when you are thinking about that headline, make sure that you think about the aim of your profile. What do you want people to do? Um, and what is it that you want to be known for right now, as you, as you, can, as you could see that I was doing? Um, you can also, if we look here, you get to, you get to edit uh, the content within your um, profile here as well. So, Think about the aim of your profile. What do you want people to do? If you want them to ring you, uh, then make sure you're adding your telephone number into this contact info section so that people can contact you that way. If you are selling a book, as you can see there, there's my book, The Business of Being Social book. That links straight out to Amazon. And it isn't just a, an Amazon link. You know that is just a, a URL. It's actually you know it takes you off to to the book URL. Um, if you're a blogger, there's my blog. You know, social media blog. You can talk about what what the blog is. There's there's all different things that you can add add here into your contact details so that if people want if you want people to contact you, they can contact you for the purposes uh, that you want them to do that. Optimize the body content of your profile. And this is really important to think about your LinkedIn profile beyond a CV. Most people, when I talk to them about LinkedIn, um, they they just say, oh yeah, well it's like it's like your CV. You know, you only go onto LinkedIn if you want people to, to find you or, or to headhunt you uh, or you're looking for a job. And that is absolutely not true you know um, I at Carvel Creative uh, which is a you know a, a, a marketing agency and digital agency we have received a number of leads for new business directly through LinkedIn directly through LinkedIn so people are looking for uh, competence and for new business services through LinkedIn. It's not just about headhunting. So therefore, think about your profile and make sure that it isn't just a CV. You don't have to put all the experience in there that you've you, that you've always done over the years. You don't have to put every single detail about the education that you've done. You know, I got five. O levels back in you know 19 whenever it was and you don't necessarily have to put those details into there just because there is a field that says education far better that you optimize your profile so that it is relevant to what people are looking for you to do for them right now so from a for example, in, ex in experience, you might just want to be talking about all the things you've done, for example, in my profile, around social media. So right now, my experience focuses around the consulting projects I've done, the training I've done, uh, all about the, those areas. Um, from an education perspective, again, it talks about you would talk about courses and, and more recent things that you've done to support um, the the profile that you are the, the 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 objective of what you want that profile to be achieving for you right now. Not necessarily related back to something you did many 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 years ago, which isn't anything to do with what you're doing right now. So really do think about the content of your profile way beyond a CV. It's your personal profile right now. This is how you are seen online as a person, you know, as a professional. And therefore, how do you want that to be positioned? It's not just a CV. So therefore, you need to continue throughout the building of your profile to use keywords so that just as we use them in our header, uh, and they're really important in helping people to A, find you, and then help, make, helping them to understand what it is that you do and what it is that you want to be known to be doing right now, you want to ensure that you utilize those keywords throughout your profile um, so that it helps you to appear as high as possible in Google and LinkedIn searches.
And as I said, LinkedIn has been around for quite a, lot, a, a while, you know, and um, it's, the, it's the oldest of the social networks and therefore the content within it is really well indexed within Google as well. So when you search for people's names, very often the thing that you will see first is, is indeed the, their LinkedIn profile that shows. So you want to make sure that, that then when you are found that that LinkedIn profile really does say the right story about who you are and what it is that you do right now. And if I was to ask you, you know, when was the last time you updated your LinkedIn profile, for many people, they kind of build their profile and then they just leave it. They don't keep going back to it weekly, monthly, to make sure that it is on point, on message, actually focused on what it is they want to be achieving right now. So just like we don't want our web pages to get out of date, don't let your LinkedIn profile get out of date. You know, you want your LinkedIn profile to be telling the most up-to-date, relevant story as possible. So, as I said, give examples of what you and your business have done and, and what you can do for people throughout, throughout your profile as well. Make sure you're using that content in, in an objective way. What is it you want them to know about you right now? Yes, you can include some personal interests and your passions, what it is that you are interested in, but remember that this is your professional persona. You, you know the photograph that you use on your profession on your LinkedIn profile shouldn't be the same one that you would use maybe over on your Facebook profile. You know this is definitely the profess professional persona. So yes, include some personal interests, but people don't necessarily need to know about you know where you like to go for your holidays and and, and various things like that. Just keep be be objective with with the content and the content just no longer just needs to be um, text. You can actually upload rich media now to engage people. So for example, if you were a blogger, you could upload a link to your blog and indeed the latest blog uh, that you are um, achieving, you can have streaming through into your LinkedIn profile. If you're a photographer, you can upload some photos. If you regularly do presentations or um, how-tos or demos or um, any any kind of content from PowerPoint to video, you can now pull that through into your profile. So you'll see here I've just taken a snip of my profile and as you go down when it talks about what it is we do, it, about you know Michelle Cobble and she works in these various things, you can see over here I've got a video intro about um, what we do on in social around uh, and digital for Carver Creative and over on the right hand side I pulled through a video of me and uh, my co-author David Taylor uh, speaking recently at the Oxford Farming Conference and so and, and that is updated, you know, we, we spoke in there in January, I spoke last week and when the video comes from that I will update the profile again. So keep updating the profile with relevant, purposeful and interesting content because when people get there, like I said, just like if a, if a web page and a website looks really out of date, you don't want your personal profile to, to look that way online. Another key point um, around your profile is getting to all star. Now, some of you that have been on uh, LinkedIn for a while may remember that once upon a time, LinkedIn used to have a goal that said get your profile to 100% complete. And um, back in September, I think late September 2000. 13, may even be in 2012 now, uh, things change all the time, but they decided to um, focus less, they wanted to, to de- uh, de-Americanize themselves as such, you know, and, and they said we, we want to become more attractive to the more global market and therefore we will change this 100% complete to all-star which is quite incredible because there's probably, I, I don't know if you could get a more American-centric, um, US-centric word than, than all-star, but, but that was the rationale behind it. And, and they came out with, instead of this very simple 100% complete, which I think everybody understood, you now have different levels of completeness, um, beginner, intermediate, advanced, expert, and all-star. But all-star effectively means a hundred percent complete and to get to all star these are the things that you have to have completed throughout your profile so you need to have included your industry and your location 
you needed to you need to include an up-to-date current po position so the role that you are working on there is a little tick box that says I currently work here you need to make sure that you've ticked that to, to show that it is a current position and importantly um, you know, if people come to me and say, well, I filled out all of that, Michelle, but I'm still not all-star, it's usually because they haven't included a description. So you just have to put a description in there with your latest um, position. Uh, two past positions, and as I said, these try and keep these as relevant and as purposeful as, as possible. Um, your education. And again, you don't have to go back to 1985 and document everything that you've you've ever done. You know, you can just put in the things that are relevant to, to the profile uh, and the, that you are trying to optimize for now. You know, that persona, that online persona of yours. Uh, your skills, a minimum of three. So and it, it helps you with that as you go through. It kind of has a tick box based on what you've been populating your content with around, you know, marketing, social media, digital marketing, etc. Um, a profile photo, and as I said, think about that profile photo, it's your professional persona, and at least 50 connections. And adding connections, again, um, LinkedIn makes that pretty streamlined, it allows you to bring in connections from your Outlook, from your phone, from Gmail, from a number of different resources. If you have a huge database, or, or any database for that matter, you can download it into a CSV file and upload it straight into LinkedIn, and then you can cross-match, it will reconcile who in that database is linked to your um, to your LinkedIn profile and, and, and then you can decide whether or not you want to connect. So getting to All Star, really, there isn't a great deal of information that you have to populate to, to make sure that you are as visible as possible on LinkedIn. And that is an important point, being as visible as possible, because when you are 100% complete, or indeed All Star, you become more visible in searches. So if I'm a social media consultant and my profile is only a beginner, and um, my colleague Vicky is a social media consultant and her, her profile is... 100% um, complete, you know, she's an all-star, when people are searching on social media consultant, she's going to come up way up in the search returns that are returned above me because our, my profile isn't complete. So when you think about search algorithms, uh, you know, LinkedIn's just a huge big database and, and therefore it needs to understand who it's going to show to who based on what terms. And being 100% complete actually assists you with boosting you up through the search rankings because it tells the alg algorithms that this is a good profile to, that we can that we can deliver on. So 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 it's preferred. You get preference. So therefore, it's definitely definitely worth doing if you want to be found on LinkedIn. And indeed, it looks more professional. You know, if you've got everything completed and uh, it's up to date and it's succinct and it's on point and on message and and with clear driven objectives for you it, it just really looks more professional and you can see there um, again we're looking at um, business training Mason you can see over here Sarah's the strength here so she's at all star and this is what you see now this profile strength sometimes people say to me hang on a minute the little bit at the top there why isn't that complete that that's about as high as it can go okay so that's it getting to all star is, is what you need to do and why that matters Tip number five is personalize all messages. So on LinkedIn, and, and you, you know, those of you on LinkedIn, you'll you'll probably receive requests to connect, and indeed there'll be times when you want to send out requests for people to connect with you. So it might be that you've just met somebody, or it might be that uh, you know somebody's trying to connect with you. And it's really frustrating if somebody tries to connect with you, and you think, well, I kind of remember that name, but I don't really remember quite where we met them or what this is about. So, so it's really important. There is a standard template in LinkedIn that just says I'd like to perfect I'd like to connect with you or I'd like to add you to my professional network which is really quite sterile and uh, not personable and it really doesn't add any context into what it is that, that, that the meeting is about so research has shown that people are far more likely to accept and appreciate the connection if you provide some form of personal contact 
relaxed. So it might be that, great to meet you at the social media training session the other day, I'd really like to keep in touch. Uh, great to meet you at the XYZ conference the other day, let's, let's, let's try and hook up and have a coffee to continue the conversation. So it's definitely worth adding that context because people meet a lot of people and therefore you want to make sure that when you connect with somebody you've got as much opportunity of, of getting that connection and therefore add context because it has been shown that people are far more likely to accept the connection if you give some personal context and it takes seconds um, and it's it's for me I just think that's just so much more um, polite really uh, and courteous. Uh, Tip number six, it's something I alluded to earlier, endeavour to look at your profile regularly. I mean here we're saying look at it every day but definitely make sure you look at it uh, regularly. Um, and there's an offline networking uh, mantra, visibility plus credibility equals profitability. And, and effectively that premise is all around the fact that every time you share something on LinkedIn, particularly, you are visible. You are visible to all of your connections. So if you put out a status update or a blog post or a, I've just done this or we've just done this or delighted to announce this or uh, here's my latest piece of research or whatever it is, every time that you share something, uh, and it might be that you're sharing something of somebody else's as well, you are effectively pushing that out into your network and that kind of you know makes sure that you stay on the radar with that network so that when you are visible and and, and this has happened to me when I have shared things about um, some a consulting project I've done or a testimonial or um, a case study about uh, you know how, how a particular project I've been working on has, has played out people will then contact me and say oh Michelle I, I didn't realize you were doing that that was really useful we're looking for some, uh, somebody to come and help us with that. Could you come and talk to us? So it definitely helps you to stay on the radar and builds that share of mind with your networks that what it is that you are doing. Um, so it's so don't just build your profile and then just leave it and think right job done optimized it's over there I'm just gonna let it do. Make sure that you feed that profile. Uh, share things regularly through that profile and indeed look at it just to, to make sure that you are happy that it, it is saying everything that you are doing. And and, and keep adding new content to it. You know, as I said, now you can add rich media to it. So if you've just done a latest video or a latest piece of content or a new article you've published, anything, just make sure you are feeding it through into your into your profile. As with all of the social networks, you know, don't attempt to spam or, or directly sell. People do this uh, such a lot on LinkedIn, and it is so frustrating. And um, you know, people will disconnect with you faster than you think if you just constantly try to push and, and to sell to people. Uh, I, I got a, a request yesterday, you know, oh, we're in the same group, and therefore I thought you might be interested in my product. And it's just a, a complete direct sell. And it's that is not going to work, just as it wouldn't work in the offline networking scenario. Can you imagine if you were in an offline networking scenario and somebody just comes over to you without really knowing who you are or understanding you or really, really having any conversation? Conversations with you previously and just coming straight up to you and pushing their business card onto you and saying hey we're great why don't you just come and buy our services you would just think it was really pushy and really spammy and, and not very professional so far better to be listening and nurturing your contacts and understanding what's going on in their worlds, you know, social is a wonderful place for, for listening and, and researching and insights. And, and then those listening and insights help you to kind of tune in and to understand where you can engage, but engage with purpose and engage with relevance rather than just trying to push your products and services at people. So do not attempt to spam or sell directly. Um, it, it, it's a no-go, nobody likes it. Think about the how you feel when it happens to you. Uh, it, it's just not productive. And indeed LinkedIn are doing lots of things to try and combat that. So for example, if you are in groups and you try and push spammy messages to other people in groups because you can have a direct conversation with people in groups without necessarily being directly connected to them. Um, if you are 
going into groups just for that purpose and, and, and being spammy. If the group moderator blocks you, you are then blocked from all other groups that you participate in. So, um, you know, there's a, there's a dangerous line to, to toe and, um, and it, it's definitely worth getting out of the, the mindset of you thinking that LinkedIn is just somewhere you can just go and spam. Uh, be targeted. So when you are looking to make connections, because it's great for making connections and it's great for finding people that you want to target and, and connect with, there is an advanced search feature on LinkedIn. And we'll have a look at it in a minute, just touch on it so you can see where it is. And it allows you to drill down way beyond age and title. So, um, for example, if, if you wanted to target um, procurement managers or IT procurement managers, you, you, can, you can actually, in a particular location, um, you, can, you, can, you can be very, very specific. So if you were looking for the role of somebody or indeed the, the name of somebody or indeed the demographic, you know, I want to get to senior partners within a 25 mile radius of London with uh, a, a employees of X plus, uh, you, can, you can use the advanced search features with in LinkedIn to enable you to do that and you can use those highly targeted elements as well to run LinkedIn ads or LinkedIn sponsored um, updates which allow you to just create messages that only go out to a certain segment um, which is which is proving to be a really useful um, use of, 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 of not spamming but being highly targeted into a specific into a specific audience the other thing to consider is that if you're looking for um, somebody and you don't know who they are but you know the company they work with or indeed you're trying to find people who who are within let's say I'm looking for the IT manager at Marks and Spencer you might not be able to find them by just putting in IT manager but if you go to Marks and Spencer's company profile you would then be able to look at their employees because it, it, it documents all the employees in the right hand corner you click on the employees and let's say there's 8,000 employees you can then do an advanced search on employees within Marks and Spencer IT manager and up will come the relevant people. So you can find people within organizations by looking at the company profiles of the LinkedIn company profiles of those organizations. And most organizations have a very um, good company profile. So so that's a that's that's usually a good starting point if you're trying to find people that you want to target. Um, and as I said, it's really useful to if you want to promote a product or service directly to an audience. That that's where the um, sponsored updates uh, and ads can be useful. So this is just a screen grab of of the advanced search. You can see some of the fields that we've got in here. Keywords in there at the moment is my name, but you could put your name down here. Keywords could be IT manager, marketing manager, procurement manager, um, chief financial officer, whatever it is that you you want to do. Titles, company, school, located in or near, and you can set radiuses. You can put postcodes and 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 radius around what the postcode area. Um, whether it's the current company, how you're connected to them as well. You can you can say I only want to to look at people I'm I've got a first connection with because I'm trying to get them to help me to make a connection to somebody else uh, and, and various other areas there. So you can see that in the advanced search, there's a few things that you can do to break down and, and start to target uh, your um, your demographics around. Tip number nine is get recommendations and recommendations have been shown, you can see there, users with recommendations are three times as likely to get inquiries through LinkedIn searches. So ask your colleagues and, uh, and you know, people that you've worked with. So how do you find get recommendations? Because it used to be in your drop down title up here. So when you went into network, once upon a time you used to have recommendations when you hit that and it dropped down. It's no longer there. Um, if you go to the uh, right hand side of your LinkedIn profile, you'll see a picture of yourself uh, on the full screen. And that is kind of what was once the cog where you get to see all of the useful things. And if you go into there and it's got, um, it, there's, a, there's a panel called manage um, 
manage my privacy and admin, then this is what drops down. And, and this is where really you manage all of your preferences from. So you can see you've got privacy controls, you can turn on and off activity broadcasts, you can select who sees your activity feed, select what others see when you viewed their profile, select who can see your connections, change your profile photo, etc, etc. And, and this area here also is where you can manage your recommendations. Now you can, if you want, go to the, your main profile, scroll right down to the bottom and you will see recommendations right down at the bottom and there's a little pencil when you're in edit profile mode and you can click on that little pencil. A lot of people get a bit confused trying to find recommendations that way. So my way is to go in through the main cog, which sits up here usually, and it just drops down and you'll see manage your recommendations. You click on that link and it takes you through to this, this area here. And manage your recommendations, you've seen here I can receive, I can these this is looking at um, this is looking at ones I've received so I can go in and, and see the ones I've received ones I've given or indeed if I'm building a program of regularly asking for recommendations to make sure that I'm keeping my LinkedIn profile as up to date as possible so let's say I'm doing my ask for recommendations here you choose your job um, that you want to be recommended for so it would any roles that you've had that you've documented into LinkedIn come into here and you just literally it's a drop down you just choose the role so let's say it's your current role um, your connections you can add up to 200 connections at any one time to ask for recommendations so you might know who they are you might want to type their email addresses directly into here if not and you want to go through all of your LinkedIn connections this little blue LinkedIn button here when you hit that it drops down all your LinkedIn connections with a little tick box to the left hand side and you can literally just walk through that and and tick 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 all the people that you want to to get recommendations for and as I said you can add up to a hundred and 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 ninety and then create your message well can you recommend me this this is editable this is all editable here you can edit this and of course this piece here is editable I'm, I'm sending this to ask for you know so you might say hi uh, I'm sending you the data, we're updating our website and we're looking for some testimonials or we're recreating some marketing materials and we're keen to get um, testimonials. Would you mind making a recommendation? That would be great. Many thanks, etc. So you can change the content of this, you hit send and off it goes. And don't think that if you have sent it to 200 people, that all of those 200 people see who else you've sent it to. Every email that goes out via that route is sent as an individual email to everybody that, you, that you're that you sending it to. So nobody gets to see one another or see who else that you've done that. But it's a really nice, useful and, and really simple system for making sure that you are getting those recommendations. So you can ask your contacts, your peers, your clients, your colleagues for recommendations. Um, you can um, use recommendations, as I said, in other marketing materials and on your website. So just because they land on LinkedIn, there's no reason why you can't copy and paste and, and put them elsewhere uh, and, and use them in, in all matter of ways. So it's a really useful system uh, for, for actually getting those systems and as we said you know there is research that said that and this this little snippet here comes directly out of out of LinkedIn um, when you, when you're looking at recommendations it's telling you that it it makes sense to get recommendations because they know that uh, you're three more times as likely to get inquiries through LinkedIn searches so definitely get those recommendations in and they also look good and as I said they're multi-purpose you can use them in, in other ways you can recycle them into lots of other ways and last but not least, grow your authority. And um, on LinkedIn, you know, it's a perfect place for you to think about how you can use your personal profile on LinkedIn to, to for le thought leadership and, and, and growing your authority as maybe an expert or a specialist out there. Um, one way to do that and to showcase your expertise is indeed to join relevant groups. So if you were um, a, an expert cat groomer and you wanted to, one of your objectives with LinkedIn was to become the number one person that everybody goes to for uh, cat grooming advice within the UK, then you would join relevant groups um, and you wouldn't necessarily just join the cat grooming groups. You would think, well, where is my audience? You know, who are the people that 
need cat grooming services and, and where are they? So you might go to pet groups or vet groups, um, uh, all sorts of cattery groups, um, advisory, pet advisory services groups, so that you can actually um, participate with an audience that is is more likely to to have queries about what it is that you do of course there's always the the opportunity to join groups that are where you are talking to your peers where you can learn best practice and you can share insights and and and, and help and support one another uh, but don't just automatically it, it, the amount of accountancy practices I've worked with and they say oh yes we've joined the accountancy groups and it's like well that's great but you know do you think where do you think people who are looking for your service Services are they're not going to be in those accountancy groups they're going to be in it may be groups talking about divorce or or, or um, all, all sorts of other areas that where you you might need to be sharing your advice and expertise into so get involved in relevant discussions and, and share your knowledge um, it is about sharing it is about earning attention so you share your knowledge uh, so that you are getting people to know you like you trust you ultimately do business with you but first and foremost there is that there is that you know relationship building and that building of trust um, and of course if there isn't a relevant group for what you do or what you want to talk about then it's really easy on LinkedIn to create your own groups and your own groups really behave like your own little mini social network so if we have a quick look here um, you've got when when we go into my groups you can see there's a number of groups here and they, they list down over on the right hand side uh, you will see here create a group so I can create that group and it takes me through step by step a really simple process of you know what do you want this group to be about does the group have its own URL do you want to add an image to this group um, is the group open is it closed all sorts of various elements to, to, to about the group and then effectively you have a group that you can then lead and um, and, and get people involved and engaged with here this this here is is when you search on LinkedIn you can search on groups this is the icon for groups on people on companies um, on, on various things this is this little collection here is the icon for groups so you can see I've just gone in and said okay I'm searching whether there is a cat grooming group and it's just really to give you an idea because look at the, the groups give you some indication about how busy they are and how active they are so you can see for example pet supplies and service providers network is a network group for all industry products professional services such as trainers groomers it's very active so it'll tell you very active 50 discussions this month 2,327 members so that's a very active so you might think oh I want to be part of a very active network I want I don't want to just join something where it's really sleepy and nobody talks uh, and I'm sharing wonderful insights but it's there's nobody there um, and, and here again in contrast you've got perfect pause your base this is much smaller there's only four members in that one and four discussions so if I had to choose out of these groups you know don't just join every group make sure you do a little bit of research to figure out well which are the active groups what are they talking about what's relevant for me and and think about the groups that 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 make sense for you if you are going to spend your time the challenge with groups is there are groups about groups so you really have to do your research to make sure that you are you are selecting maybe just a handful of groups you can you can be a member of up to 50 groups on LinkedIn but maybe just a handful of groups to start with to to see how it goes and to see how it's working for you because you know to participate it goes back to that visibility um, credibility equals profitability you know you're gonna have to participate to to be known and to, to build up that reputation and you it might be simpler to do that in one group rather than 50 groups so that was our 10 tips I'm just gonna go back to the the start of here where the summary page was um, this should have been at the beginning and the end so here we are so we've covered changing your URL uh, and making sure that you claim that URL for your own completing um, a compelling headline you get hundred and twenty characters so make sure that you are filling that out and that it really tells the story of who you are one of the rules I always say is that the headline should say everything about the profile they really shouldn't need to read on any more to find out anything else Else about you so really set yourself that challenge of does my headline 
tell the whole story you know do they really need to read on and if it doesn't think about what you can be doing to optimize it to improve that uh, continue with the optimizing of your content throughout your profile think about those keywords that you really want to be found for and make sure that they are populated throughout the profile not that every sentence is a keyword 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 because that's just going to look a bit spammy but just making sure that you are at least referring to them throughout the profile as much as you can um, in a conversational way get the profile to all star you saw the components of what's included to get to all star so it shouldn't take you too long we've timed it, it takes no more than an hour um, max and so get to all star because that really helps you to become far more visible in search uh, on LinkedIn. When you are connecting with people, don't look like a spammer uh, and annoy people. Personalize your message and add context. Remember, great to meet you at such and such. Thought it would be good for us to connect here too. Um, you know, let's have a coffee. Let's carry on the conversation. Make sure that it, you know you are using this as a networking resource and personalize those messages effectively. Don't just let your profile sit there. Once it's done, you know, tick the box. Make sure that you are feeding your profile, that you are looking at it at least regularly. Um, be active because the more active you are, the more visible to your network you are. And um, that's kind of like getting out there and networking. So you're, you're, you're on there and you're sharing and you're talking and um, people are able to see what it is that you're up to. So be active because otherwise your profile is, is like a billboard in, in the desert. You know, you're not necessarily driving people to it or giving people a reason to, to come and see what it is that you're, that you're up to these days. Always you know big message here do not spam do not sell 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 nobody likes it you don't like it yourself it doesn't work in a networking situation so the purpose is about getting people to know you like you trust you ultimately do business with you not just the big pushy hard sell be targeted in who you want to connect with uh, it's always makes more sense to be targeted so you know LinkedIn is a wonderful thing because influencers and people that you want to connect with are very visible and you can see who's connected to who so be as targeted as you need to be in connecting with the people that you think are going to be useful and purposeful uh, for, for your objectives. Get recommendations. You, you, we've seen that recommendations definitely help to boost your um, visibility within LinkedIn and you're far more likely, three times more likely, to get an inquiry through LinkedIn if indeed you've, you've, you've got some recommendations in there. So make a habit of getting recommendations. Maybe visit recommendations every month and think, is there somebody I should be getting a recommendation from this month that, you know, I'm, I work with this 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 month that that um, you know that we that I could be contacting, and then think about groups. Think about how you can grow your authority via groups. As I said, be warned. Do your research. There are lots and lots of groups. You really need to think about focusing uh, your activity so that you're not spreading yourself too thinly. That you are really focused. Uh, do the research and think about which of the groups that are that are actually going to add some value to to your purpose online. Okay, so that's that. I'll just flick you back to the end of the slide deck. Thank you very much, Michelle. Pleasure. So we've had a few questions come in, some quite good ones actually. Um, this one gets asked quite a lot on our um, training course actually. If you have a job and you're a freelancer, so say you're a photographer as well, um, alongside, should you have two LinkedIn profiles or should you try and fit that into one if you do two slightly different things so you have a so you, you you have a job and that's that's the thing that you want to promote yeah that the fact that you're working or is it the fact I mean I would always go back to well what's what's the objective um, and if your objective is to do both equally as as well then it may be worth having two whereas one for the photography business for example it might be that you have you set up a company profile um, for that photography business and um, but then you can't really take your connections through to it so so I guess it's thinking about what target audience you're wanting the most on LinkedIn and, and aiming your profile at that. It is, and that's why it's always very important to be very objectively driven. Um, if if you're 
if your role is is your role and it is is completely nothing to do with what it is that you you know your passion is um, but what you're trying to do is actually grow yourself as the you know in in the photography side of things then if you're using LinkedIn for business development and uh, to showcase who it is and what you do then you're probably wanting to focus on the photography side first and foremost and maybe somewhere in your experience you would say and I am currently working at such and such mm -hmm. um, so you would give much more emphasis to the photography side of things uh, if if it's mandatory that you know through the company that you work with that you have to be on LinkedIn and have a LinkedIn profile then you might have to have two separate profiles one for uh, you you know the, the job that you do and um, uh, but that said you know you know because you can add lots of rich media into into LinkedIn now you can act, you could actually make a big you can add a project into your personal profile which is all about your photography business so there are ways around it but I think it, it all comes back to the objectives what what's what's the purpose and what's important and really making sure that you are pushing the thing that you're that you want to be known for um just out of interest off the back of that, is there any issues with having two LinkedIn profiles or it can, it can get a bit confusing they can't if people are searching for you? It, 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 it can um, it, and again it depends if you go with, with what you go with with your name. So you could have Paul Smith you know who works for Marks and Spencer uh, and you might have Paul Smith photography. Mm -hmm. So you can put photography into the into your name yeah, exactly. um, you know which would differentiate you. Okay great. Thank you. Um, so let's see another one here. Um, oh, is there any etiquette? Um, what should you do if someone tries to connect with you who you don't know? Well, if somebody tries to connect with me who are, if I don't know, I either completely ignore it um, because I think I don't, particularly if they have just sent me a thing that says, I'd like to connect with you on my, you know, I'd like to add you to my professional network, which means that A, they haven't bothered to take any, make any context. They have literally just said, oh, found my profile and said, connect. Um, now, you know, you could just ignore it, but if I, if I, I always tend to have a look at who's trying to connect with me, and if I think, hmm, that looks interesting, I sometimes go back to them and say, you've asked me to connect, because you can send a message to people, you don't have to connect with them, you've asked me to connect with you, but I'm not quite sure what the context is, can you let me know? And if they don't bother to come back to you, then you just yeah, think, fine, yeah. you know, they were just spamming and hitting buttons. Whereas if they do come back and say, well actually, we've been looking for some, uh, we're looking for some training, you know, and, and I've been looking at your profile and I'd like to connect so I can tell you more about it, then then that, that's been that's quite useful. So that's what I do. I mean, there isn't a, a, an etiquette I mean, the etiquette really should be, whenever you connect with somebody, use context. Just don't try and connect with them without actually having a context. And that comes back to the points we were saying about be targeted um, and be focused and be purposeful about what the profile's all about. Okay, and a final one. Um, is there an optimum length for a profile? Um, can it be too long? Or I've seen, Some I've seen actually are very long compared to others. Yeah, and I think and I think that's where people are just trying to stuff as much content in there as as possible. Uh, I, I mean, I come from you know a marketing background, so I would say be as objective and as concise yet as uh, engaging and creative and compelling as you possibly can be. You you can. I mean, for every job role, there's a, there's an interesting infographic, Sarah, that you might want to share that I think we share. Yeah from the when because of course there's a full LinkedIn training course and in the training course we go through all of these things in so much more detail and there is a an infographic that we have which talks about how many characters you can actually use in each and every segment of your profile so when we're looking at content and keyword ratios which we do in more detail on in the full day course um, we 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 reference back to that. So is there is there a, a an optimum point? 
not really, you know, um, it, it's quality, about, quantity, it, I, I would say it's yeah. quality, it's about being objective, uh, you, you might have very little text but you might have some incredibly engaging videos and, and visual content in there which again wouldn't really add into the characters but there's definitely, definitely uh, an element of making sure that your keywords are populated throughout every part of, of your, of your um, profile. Okay, great. Lovely. Well, thank you, everybody, for listening in today. I hope that's all been of use to you. Um, as Michelle said, we do have LinkedIn training courses, which, of course, go into all of this in a lot more detail and also cover company profiles as well, which we haven't touched on today. Um, our next course is on the 25th of March, and then we've also got on the 29th of April and 28th of May. Of course, you can view those on our website, businesstrainingmadesimple.co.uk. Um, our next Google Hangout, same time, same place next month, um, on the 3rd of April, so that will be the first Thursday of April, um, is all about Pinterest for your business. Um, so if you're interested in print, print, ooh, print, Pinterest, interested in Pinterest, Pinterest, that's a hard one. <laughs> if you're interested in Pinterest, um, then please do register, and you can register on our website as well, and I'll also include the link in the email, which I'll send you um, with the recording from today. Just a quick reminder of all our handles, please do connect with us on these channels and um, if you do want to be kept up to date with all our courses, Google Hangouts and of course social media hints and tips and updates of all the channels. That's our Twitter handle there, MIMO Training. We're on LinkedIn as the Made Simple Group. Facebook as the Made Simple Group. Google Plus you'll be able to see all our past Hangouts because they all stream live from our Google Plus page. Um, so you'll be able to see them there and please do give us a plus one and recommend them if you liked what you've seen. And then there's our Pinterest as well. Okay, great. Thank you everyone for listening in. We'll just do a quick wave, wave, bye bye before we go. Oh. And we're here. Lovely. Okay, bye. bye. See you next time. time.